thank you, Namu, for taking us through such an informative uh, uh, panel discussion. Thank you, all the panelists. I definitely found myself taking notes. Um, let's now move in the fourth and the final conscious pause. Uh, this one is for well As humans, we are constantly feeling all kinds of emotions and not always do we have the time in the day or even week or month or year to pay attention to them. Um, our lifestyles and busyness often come in the way. And here at the Conscious Woman Summit, um, when we were creating it, we knew for a fact that we wanted to turn the compassionate lens towards our emotions as well. I'm so thrilled that we have Radhika Jain uh, with us to lead us through this conscious pause on emotional well-being. Radhika is the co-founder and artistic director of First Drop Theatre. She's also a therapy practitioner and uses different art modalities from movement, drama, visual arts, music, poetry and storytelling in her work with individuals and groups. Radhika, thank you so much for joining us and over to you. Thank you, Tapsi, and welcome to this session on Conscious Emotional Pause. For the next half an hour, we're going to pause and look at our emotional well-being through the lens of expressive arts. Now, what's emotional health? You know, as Tapsi said, do we really pause enough to take care of it in our lives? Well, emotional health or emotional well-being is really to, you know, be in touch, be in tune with our emotions, our vulnerability, and our authenticity. Now, emotional well-being really does not mean that we're always happy, that um, we don't have uh, sadness in our lives, or we don't want to, uh, we, we are not angry. No. It is really about self-awareness, and you know, about acceptance of emotions, about fostering resilience, and uh, having that having those skills to really manage the ups and downs of day-to-day -day life. Now, why is it important to take care of our emotional well-being? Well, we live in a stressful environment. So, of course, to manage stress better, uh, to become more resilient towards stress. So, you know, you all know that stress leads to low immune system, more physical illness. So, managing that stress leads to more holistic life you know leads to good leads to our good health also emotional well-being also gives us more energy you know we are focusing more better we're focusing better we're also thinking more clearly and um, it really also helps in our self-esteem uh, when we can manage our emotions better when we can regulate our emotions better we feel better about ourselves not only that, when we manage our emotions better, it is easier to have deeper connect, not only with others, but with ourselves as well. We have more compassion towards ourselves and therefore towards others. So um, how do we put all this in action? First is, you know, to really become aware of what we are feeling, to really pause and observe the emotions when they arise. We can also, this can also help us, you know, to catch that little self-critic that pops up sometime for us. And also what we can put in action is to become curious about what we are feeling. Now, where does expressive arts come into all this? Now, expressive arts is a really powerful medium that we can use to become aware of these emotions and how to regulate them. Now, expressive arts uses the medium of visual arts like painting, drawing, music, improvised drama, poetry, uh, imagery, guided visualization, and other creative pursuits to really bridge the gap between the conscious and the unconscious. It really helps us to externalize 
rather than internalize difficult emotions now people come and tell me oh but i'm not a good artist i'm not an actor i don't i don't do painting or i don't do any art but i tell them that really you know it is not about the finished result here it is really about the process of creating so it's really not about becoming a great artist but really about finding that meaning that connection in our life so let's try this wherever you are sit back close your eyes and become aware of what feeling you're sitting with right at this moment you may take a few deep breaths and give that feeling a movement and a sound it could be ah or it could be hmm a movement and a sound or feeling that you're sitting with right now and if you're having trouble with really recognizing that feeling giving it a movement or a sound then perhaps become aware of where in your body you're feeling that sensation or you're having that feeling perhaps give it a shape or a color you could put into the chat what shape color perhaps what sound came up for you what feelings that you're sitting with hmm sound of ah uh, yeah maybe a shape or a color that came up for you so what we did right now was really give a physical form to our you know to our emotions and this giving this physical form really allows us to feel in control of the process it it really you know some of the feelings are very ambivalent and giving them shape giving them color really helps us become in touch with them better um and one of the benefits of externalizing this process is that we can become a witness we can become an observer of our own process which also means that we are creating a certain distance between us and the emotion that we're feeling we're giving ourselves some time to respond and not react and of course one of the most obvious benefit of expressive arts is you know the spark that it creates in the imagination we are we are getting new insights we are getting um, you know we are exploring something new we are also helping ourselves in unblocking or you know some of those difficult feelings or experiencing some feelings that we really cannot articulate what expressive arts also does is support our integrative learning you know we use a lot of different sensory experiences whether it is you know the color the sight the touch taste a uh, smell and all these sensory experiences really helps us to know more about our emotions in different ways and each of these sensory experiences is enhanced by the other so um, we get thoughts sensations and images that we don't normally experience by just being in the cognitive so what we're going to do right now is go through a um, a guided visualization i'm going to take you through that and um let me go to do some some bit of expressive arts post that so uh sit comfortably wherever you're sitting if you're sitting on a chair then perhaps uh, keep your legs uncrossed if you're sitting at a table you may want to rest your arms on the table top or perhaps let them drop into your lap 
close your eyes and focus on your breath slowly inhaling from your nose and exhaling from your mouth do it for 3 times slowly inhaling and exhaling from your mouth continue to inhale and exhale slowly and relax the muscles on your face especially around your jaw let your jaw open slightly so that any tension that can flow away from your face relax the muscles in your scalp and neck by letting your head move forward slightly relax the muscles in your shoulder and move down to the muscles in your arms and hands and continue to feel the tension slip away from your back chest stomach all the way down to the base of your spine now let this feeling of relaxation spread to your thighs your knees your lower legs down to your ankles until it reaches the tip of your toes take a few minutes now to scan your body or any part that you feel is not fully relaxed take a deep breath send that breath into that area imagining warmth and relaxation reaching that part once you feel relaxed allow yourself to see a mental image of yourself move this image forward to a place in your life where you normally feel happy confident hopeful this could be a time spent in nature maybe watching the sunset watching the moon rise maybe looking at the ocean or a lake or gazing at a flower or it could be in relationship with people around you be interacting with them maybe at home maybe in your kitchen and if you don't really recall such a time then make it up now fantasize it give you a moment to create this image for yourself where you're feeling hope where you're feeling confident Now slowly let's put some details in this image. Slowly become aware of the physical sensations in your body when you're at that place, that image. 
what are the smells around you what are some of the sounds that you can hear is there anything that you can touch what's the temperature of this place are there any colors you see in this image how does your body feel to be in this place inhale that energy and exhale now love was strong but a very light bubble around the image to protect it and anxiety just knows to leave this bubble and knows to go away and emotions know what to do in this bubble to happen but not stay now that when you see this image fully begin inhaling and bring it into your core make room for it continue breathing feel that confidence and hope coming deep inside of yourself finding its home gradually bring yourself to an awake alert state stretch a bit wiggle your toes your fingers slowly open your eyes breathe deeply but remain focused on what you just experienced now i invite you wherever you are if you're comfortable move in that space that you're in to express how you felt in that image if you're not comfortable in moving then perhaps take a paper and a pen and create an image or a symbol which would remind you of this confidence this hope you could also write few sentences starting with i am i have or i feel take 2 3 minutes to really acknowledge its importance and keep keep this image near to you movement that's what you're doing remind you how you felt that image of full confident this image if you're making could always go back refer to it and reflect whenever you need to 
maybe when you're feeling anxious about something or different moments of your life you can always also go back to the image to the symbol perhaps to that writing to really reflect back in gratitude to the happy moments that you have had really derive emotional strength from that feeling of gratitude if you have finished making that image perhaps or writing those few sentences could really share it if you would want to the chat what is that place of hope is that case contentment for you what feelings are you sitting with in that space free flowing flower feeling of calmness someone has written i am i have statements and feel okay to share please share reading some of the comments feel like singing love you zindagi being relaxed and peaceful in a peace a song that comes to you yeah thankful for everything i've got to really pause and give ourselves that those few minutes moments hope of confidence gratitude and this is something that you can do in your day to day life just take out 5 minutes give yourself this visualization go back to that space that one place of hope and confidence your body has felt it you perhaps got an image some words with it see you Yeah, if there are any questions regarding expressive arts, regarding emotional regulation for expressive arts, I'm I'll be glad to take those. Thank you so much Radhika that was um absolutely beautiful just so wholesome um thank you for um turning our attention to emotions um uh, i think in just about 20 minutes you've really elevated how all of us are feeling um to emotions which are um which feel really good in the body i think just somebody said they are fe- feeling more peaceful uh they are feeling more grateful uh they are feeling a sense of calm or a sense of joy thank you so much and i i love that you began 
when you began, you mentioned that um, we can start by just getting curious about our emotions. And I think that's, um, that's so beautifully put. Um, I don't think a lot of us sit with just trying to be curious uh, about our emotions. Okay, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling like this? So um, instead of having a more maybe um, stricter sort of uh, approach, this is far more compassionate. So thank you so much. Um, I, I hope you're reading some of the comments. Everyone's been loving the session. Um, if there are any questions uh, out there, Kevin, do let us know if there are any questions. Radhika just wanted to um, ask you a quick one that um, for somebody who is, uh, for somebody to access um, expressive arts, what are some of the modalities that you would, um, that you would sort of say are most accessible or easy to use for a lay person? What, what would you suggest? I think um, what I have seen uh, working with people, words, if you are more inclined to words, Right? If you're more inclined to just picking up a pen and doodling, that's also expression. And we do we doodle most of the times when we are sometimes sitting in a meeting, we doodle. So it's not that, you know, we are not. So that's also a way of putting our um, emotions out there in a very physical form. Um, so it really depends on what comes easily for you. If words come easily, maybe putting it, it in words in free writing, perhaps giving it a poetic form. If um, picking up a pen or pe uh, colors come easily to you, put it out there in colors, in, in some shapes. And as, as I also mentioned, you know, it's not about making that perfect poetry which rhymes. It's not about making that perfect painting. Even if, the, if you're sitting with an emotion of anger and all you want to do is pick up a pen and make some, you know, scratches on paper, Feel free to do that. That's an expression. If you're more comfortable with moving, it could just be a movement where, for example, if you're feeling relaxed, giving it a form. If you're feeling confused, really, you know, moving your body in a way that brings it out um, from inside to outside. Thanks, Radhika. Thanks for giving those examples and also just normalizing uh, that this is not about uh, the expression, so to say, and how good it is or how perfect it is, but just express for the sake of expressing. So thank you so much, Radhika, and thank you for your time and creating such a special space here for the half an hour that we had together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.